Either. The word that <clears throat> has never found its correct interpretation in uh, mankind history is the word Islam. You know, Islam, of course, we may understand, you understand that means submission. When you read the translation, you say tr submission. But you find the word all the time when you read something in English, you find the word Islam. It's like when you hear the word uh, in the religion before God or with God is Islam, which is not correct. So when you hear the word Islam, it's already the interpretation is the word, it's, it's not correct. It is as if you say, the color before God or with God is the transparency. Then here there is a contradiction. You're talking about the color and all of a sudden on the one hand you say color, on the other hand you say transparency. Transparency doesn't have a color, so it's the same thing. So the religion is itself, this is a deen, the religion before God is submission. That means there is no name. It is as if you say, also another example, you say the shape in God's, you know, the shape, you're talking about the shape before God is the non-shape. The image before God is a non-image. It's all the time. You admit it and then you reject it at the same time. <clears throat> so the word Islam is submission. Okay, we understand submission. But when you write it like this, even Muslims are non-Muslims. There is a sort of stagnation. In their perception, they find a sort of stagnation. They find the name. The name is itself creating a stagnation, creating polarity, creating a sort of like me and you, when in fact it's not correct. You know, when you say, as I gave the example initially, I said the color, when it comes to God, the color before God or the color in God's you know, with God is a non-color. Or you say is the transparency. So here we understand that there is no color. You know, you hear the Islam, the word Islam submission. What do we mean submission? What does it mean? Meaning we have our will and God's will. And then what do we do? We eliminate our will for God's will. But why? Why is this? I mean, I have my will. God's will is like just to sort of like sacrifice, sort of like, well, it's because it's affecting our emotions. It's because of our emotions in this world you know, that creates, this is what we create for ourselves, tightness, stress, anxiety. In the hereafter, do you think the world is waiting for us? No, it is the way you prepare it today. You are just going to enter your own world of consciousness, which is here, your world of consciousness. At the same time, it's Parallel existence is your metaphysical world. Getting back to word God's will. Why we say my will for God's will. In other words, I eliminate mine. Human being cannot avoid from having, from being submissive to one of the three. You see, my will, 
You see, the outside will, which is another audience creature like me, and God's will. But what's the difference? There is an emotion that is developed when it is my will. An emotion that is developed. It's from the me. The me is validating the me, which is always my ego. The me validating the me, the me validating the me, the me is satisfied of the me. But usually it's according to the reputation of the outside reputation. The prestige to gain, for me to gain, like a celebrity status in my environment. It's the reputation. So the internal admiration is the first one to be able to be validated in this external admiration. Yet, the audience that you generated in your mind, in your state of consciousness, is punctualizing me. In other words, segment of time. It is centralizing me when it comes to space. And it is, it is giving me a sort of a parameter, the way I should think. Speaking about space, time, and manner. The audience that I generated intentionally, voluntarily, I said, for I devoted myself to, in other words, the submissiveness. So this is to the me, to the outside audience. When it comes to, you say, you eliminate my will for God's will. Can you speak about the time here? Can you speak about space? Can you speak about the manner? You know, space disappears. It becomes universality. This is what we call, cons you know, cosmic consciousness. You know, the self admiring the self. I devoted myself to this audience. I devoted myself to external audience. As a matter of fact, it is just centralizing a human being, centralizing his emotions, and punctualizing as well his emotions. A person is here becomes characterized by time, space, and manner. When it comes to divinity, say the God's will, here you become outside space, outside time, outside the manner. In other words, there is no way, specific way. In other words, you have your own. Human being is seeking this unconsciously. In other words, he doesn't know exactly, but he is looking for something in his life. He's looking for his uniqueness. Everybody is looking for that. And he doesn't want his uniqueness, someone to share it with him. He doesn't want anybody to be uh, associated with him. He wants to be unique. Here, there is one uniqueness that is correct. And there is another uniqueness that is false and can cause him misery. The uniqueness that the person is looking for, if it is under the oneness of God, in other words, he does things without a program. He got things, he does things in the name. You say, in the name of God. It's not exactly the word, in the name of God. You know what I'm saying? There is a uniqueness manifested that the person ignores as a result. A uniqueness. If he is seeking uniqueness directly, here he will create challenges challengers in his life two there is a uniqueness that is under the oneness of god that is not programmed a person does things freely and conditionally there is a feeling he doesn't know how to explain it, it doesn't go under any kind of explanation cannot be put into words feeling then here, he will gain something, status, feeling, 
he may get into a trap again. Why? If the person wants to continue his journey in his life, in other words, to give credit to God, that's another bootstrap. To give credit to God, to thank God, to continue, he will have this kind of like navigation all the time of his emotions. He will navigate here. It's a stagnant. It looks like he is a stagnant, but his emotions are navigating all the time, are changing in a state of metamorphism all the time. The other one who is seeking, you know, this uniqueness directly without going through this kind of like uh, journey, this uniqueness is just kind of like a challenge and you are always subject to have hand wrestling from otherness, emotional kind of challenge all the time. So getting back to the word submission, the submission towards, like you say, you gods for God's will and you eliminate. Why we, in the beginning, we say that submission is a process, is not a name, is not a title, is not a place you enter, as you hear say, converted to Islam. It's like I entered, as the word is not correct, by the way. You know, you say inverted, is, you know, perhaps it is a little bit correct. It's like, as you say, I'm going uh, from Australia to the world. Australia is in the world. Getting to your primordial or primitive state of non-image, that's what it is. You're getting to that. You're not getting from one religion to another. That's not correct. You're not going, you say, it's person, it's person from Judaism to, to Islam or from Christianity to... That's not correct. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, everything is included inside. You are getting to your own primitive state. You're going to feel something you never felt it before. So, getting back to the word non-image, non-shape, non. Non is colorless. You, all right, so if it is the case, you say religion before God or with God is a non-religion, is, non is submissions of Allah. Or you say we are coming to class to study the color and uh, to study the color of transparency. That's a contradiction, yo. <laughs> yeah. Why we say this? It's because you are subject to a color. It's because you are subject to stagnation. You are subject to certain characterization that you have to pay close attention to eliminate within your state of conscience. That is you know, characterizing your time, space, and manner. That's why we say submission, getting back. During the day, during our like, you know, period of time where we live, you know, we are subject, our unconscious, not conscious, is collecting identities, collecting that we claim all the time and we put a platform and we stand on. Actually, this platform is itself directing the flow of our emotions. That's the acquired. That is the acquired. Here, what is the role of this submission or transparency that is eliminating the colors? What is the role? Is your role of your conscience or duty of conscience to pinpoint your eyes inwardly, which is introspection, to eliminate it? To continue. The word is not stagnation. Whether from its microcosmic perspective, which is the, you know, the self, or the macrocosmic perspective. It is constantly changing. If you try to stagnate, which is you find a sort of like temporary uh, uh, comfort, you are only creating hand wrestling the existence. The reason why we say Islam or submission is built on five pillars. This is what is it. It is built on five pillars. What is on the top? Submission. What is submission? There is nothing. It is as you say, the transparency is built on five pillars. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is built on five pillars. But where is the transparency? We don't even see it. 
Okay, here you can understand that the five pillars, they are getting you back, taking you back to your primordial state to live the existence before being characterized by nationalism, by culture, habits, keep going. This is what it is mean, what it means by built on five pillars. You have first one is the confession. There is no God except God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. What is this? Why we call it confession? You know, confession, actually in Arabic, it doesn't start by an affirmation of a negation. As it is translated, there is. That's an affirmation of a negation. As a matter of fact, you know, in Arabic is directly no, no God. It is the atheist. The atheist, the first part of the atheist is correct. You know, the atheist is, is tired of the tightness of the idolatry of all these institutions, uh, organized religion, uh, you know, etc. He got tired and he said, no God. He doesn't want God. Islam is the same thing. You know, when you come to Islam, you say, no God. The only thing the atheist stood with himself by eliminating the gods, he stood with himself, he fell into another trap, which is the me, without realizing it. He will see the world from the perspective of the me. All he's going to see is from the tightness of space that he's surrounded by and his age. He cannot see beyond that. The Muslim different. He goes to the second part, except God. Now here, there is no shape. We don't know. That's, that's what it is. That's the eternity. That's universality. And that's beyond time and space. That's the difference between an atheist and a believer, a Muslim. I'm talking about a sincere believer. Now, that's the confession is itself. By the time the person is characterized by a color, he goes back to the non-color because the non-color, the transparency, you have the ability to accept all the other colors you are including, you are combining all the other colors by going to your transparency. This is the benefits you get from being transparent, you know, you know from accepting, embracing this transparency. Yet, what's going on in the world? The one who's supposed to be like that is a Muslim. Muslim is running after these identities of nationalism, cultures. You know, he is creating for himself. He put people on a defensive spot. Think like Judaism, Jewish. The Jewish, they created these like uh, pedestal. You know, they stand on the pedestal of the chosen. And humanity is below us yet you hear them through history all the time they say people are against us people are targeting us why don't know why people don't like us whatever as a matter of fact they created this for themselves which is not true I don't know I mean uh, the Muslim in his faith cannot be a part of his faith to say I don't like someone I don't like his actions, I don't like his deeds, what he does, as bad or whether from a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Who cares? The thing is, this kind of doctrine, in the name of religion, you put people under you, that's danger. Anyway, so we spoke about La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, the first thing. Now, the other four pillars, you will find them all linked to the time and why is that you know the prayer is related to time has to do with the time you know the charity giving the charity is after one year in other words you have what we call a nisab the amount of money that is known you know you look for it the known it's not by the time you have this amount of money you're going to give it. No, it has to turn around. The, money, the amount of money has to turn around one year, the lunar calendar. And then you give uh, 140 from your amount of money. But it's related to time. Ramadan is time. Hajj, the pilgrimage is time. Why is this? 
You are collecting time. You are transferring the temporal to the eternal. This is what it means. In order for you to gain this God's will, which is the transparency, you live it. You know what I'm saying? With these five pillars. Those are four pillars I'm talking about. The four that everything is small. You know, if a small, you're going to see at the same time, you know, there's something is Buddhi in Buddhism, Hinduism, when they speak about free yourself, you understand? They, stay, they say free yourself to reach enlightenment. Be careful when you empty something, where was your consciousness? Whom did you generate consciously? That's going to take over. It's not just to free you, you free yourself, you fall into the self, the, God, the ego that will take over. Pay attention to your consciousness. When you free the self, this is the self, Efasmo, you empty the self, who will take over is that the one that will substitute. Then here, if you are generating the audience as a supervision, you know, that will supervise you, with your humility, you elect these worship in front of the Lordship. This is what you're going to gain. It's not just to free the self and let it, you know what I'm saying? You're free. You empty something at the same moment. I say this, at the same moment, where was your consciousness? Whom did you absorb this oneness from? This is will give you your uniqueness. Perhaps you went a little far. Listen, it's always pleasure, as I have here in front of me, in the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. This is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, pray, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds. You know, you when you read it, you know, for those who don't speak Arabic, I don't know. I was told by a lot, a lot of people. I haven't experienced it, but I was told by people, those who don't speak Arabic, when they recite this in Arabic, you know, they recite it. Some of them told me, told me, you know, when you have uh, an image, you have a sound, a song, I don't know, it's déjà vu. You know, déjà vu is a French expression. It's already seen. You say, man, I heard it somewhere. I don't know. It was like way, way back. I don't know. I don't say when I was born. I don't say when I was in my mother's womb. I don't say someone on the mountain. I don't know. I heard these, these expressions somewhere. Actually, they are engraved in your state of consciousness. You know, it was a story... Uh, we wrap up with this story quickly. There was a, <clears throat> uh, an Egyptian writer, philosopher, Imam, call him whatever you want. I don't want to name him. He was once, this is in the 60s, I believe, he was once on the ship. And the ship looks like, you know, the, 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 the crew, they were all Italians. He and some people, Egyptians, they were Muslims, they ask the captain, they say, is it okay if we, you know, make Jumu'ah? You know, the Jumu'ah is the Friday prayer. And they were not obliged to do it under obligation when you are in uh, traveling. But they said, let's just do it. He wanted to make, as we call, da'wah. Because there were a lot of people from different parts of the world. He stood there while he was reciting, speaking, giving this sermon. There was a girl over there crying, crying, crying. When they finished, you know, he finished the Juman, And then... She asked some people, you know, she was from the, back then, she was from Yugoslavia. And then she asked some people, they said, she said, look, I don't know, it's not all what he was saying, but some verses that he was reciting or he was verbalizing, some verses, they made me sort of like flying in the air. There was one was <clears throat> listening to her and she was crying. And he thought that those are the verses from the Quran. Anyway, listen, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and make your days 
I mean, your nights as shiny as your days. And see you soon.